It's eight oh four. It's eight oh five, July the fifth, twenty fifteen. We're here with a live broadcast of Barry Flow Upstream fifty five entitled Leaks. We'll be covering a week's worth of BlackBerry related topics. We've got an awesome on air catch to watch tonight. We've got editor in chief at Crackberry, the one and only Blaze. How you doing, Blaze? Not too bad. Can't complain. <clears throat> Good to have you on, man. We're here as well with our own developer, Brandon Orr. How you What's doing, up? man? What's up, everybody? What's up, let's, let's, let's see if I can get this right, Brandon. As well, we're here with Alex, who is the lead at Cyberbytes, Inc. Is that correct, Alex? <laughs> yes, that is, that is the correct company. Excellent. Yeah. I'm glad I nailed that down. And last but certainly not least, we got our man, Darius Stokes. How you doing, bro? What's up, people? What's going on? We got we we don't have too much to talk about, but what we have to talk about, I guess, is kind of kind of heavy for a lot of people out there, man. <laughs> the fans have been going crazy. They've been talking all sorts of stuff. <laughs> I want to I want to start off though. Let's we'll start talking about BBM money, Indonesia. It's seen some expansion. Did you guys happen to read through the article? They kind of did like a media event and press release, bringing BBM money to the other devices, iOS, Android, and a more integrated solution. What did you guys think of the news? I think it was good, but it doesn't really mean much to me because I'm not in Indonesia. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say the same thing. It's like it's cool to hear it, you know, and it was something that I know we had been talked about. Like, let's say back like a year ago, when we were talking about the potential that BlackBerry has in terms of its monetization. But uh, it, yeah, like who cares? <laughs> as far as you know, <laughs> as far as in you know the North American region, like I think it's gonna have like more of a substantial uh, impact for BBM money if it was here because you have uh, you know a wider amount of consumers and or customers that could use the service and really uh, make the big money for BlackBerry in terms of that specific service but you know I mean it's cool that it's out but you know what does it really benefit us as a whole? I, yeah, I mean, like, like, it's kind of like a proof of concept what do you think Alex? Yeah they're definitely trying to test it on a smaller scale I think to see if it's, it's feasible um, I have a few buddies that actually owe money. I owed money to Fourth of July. Like we split, you know, food and various other things. So I had to pay them. And of course, you know, you end up owing seven, eight, nine dollars. And how often do you have like the exact change in your wallet? So a lot of them do have BBM. So it would be really nice to just send them over money and not have to deal with that. Instead, it's like I give them five and it's like, okay, write down that I owe you two bucks still. And like, it's just a pain. So it would be nice to have a a service like that. And there are a lot out right now, but you know. It's tough it, to get everyone else signed up from. It's cool to see kind of how BBM Money has integrated with the actual Indonesian market. They're doing a lot of like sales and promotions. You can get things discounted right there through BBM and actually pay. So it's kind of a method of it's mobile top up, so getting more minutes on your phone, more data or whatever, as well being able to send money exchanges and as well buy things. Again, why is this not like attached to BBM channels for brands? You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I found, I found the uh, they have. <clears throat> In the in the article, they have some statistics, basically, you know, one, two, three, four, five statistics that are listed in there. But it says less than twenty percent of Indonesians have access to a traditional bank account. Moreover, just eleven percent of the two hundred and fifty million inhabitants of Indonesia have debit cards, and only three percent have credit cards. This means there are more BBM users in the country than there are debit and credit card users combined. Wow. That's a pretty it's crazy a, statistic yeah. when you actually think about yeah. it. Like there's there's more BBM users in the country than there are debit card and credit card holders. That's crazy. When yeah. I was watching and, that thing from Torsten Hines, when they actually started out that pilot project, he said that like people run little micro economies through their BBM. You know, they'll sell yeah, goods right. and they'll exchange money directly through there. So it is kind of interesting focusing on that that smaller scale. Yeah. What do you, what do you think I, about it? I mean, I'm I'm at least excited to see it's expanding. They seem to be going forward with it. I think they've got like a million subscribers on their BBM channel right now, which is kind of crazy. Yeah. So hopefully it continues to grow. If they show it's kind of as a proof of concept, they can maybe bring it to other markets. In one of the Inside BlackBerry blog posts that was about uh, that they had about it, at the very bottom they said, you know, we are looking to explore other markets that this would do well in. So yeah, not I necessarily think- the market we're in. Right. I think it's kind of cool that like it's it's really like BlackBerry that's you know bridging the gap there in that country in, in terms of the economy you know by giving them these electronic accounts if you will 
uh, you know, helping them to be able to transfer money, uh, transfer money in like more secure ways. And that is, it really is BlackBerry that's behind all of that. So, you know, here, of course, like, as we mentioned, it was kind of redundant to us because we're in the North American region. We don't have, you know, access to that particular service. But we know there's a lot of hoops and loops that they have to jump through in order to make that happen here, especially, you know, with, you know, U.S. regulations and I'm sure with Canadian regulations as well. Um, and having to get access with these banks, prove that it's secure, prove that it's, uh, you know, something that can essentially help the economy in terms of, uh, from an economic economic standpoint. But no, I, it's yeah, bringing in access about. for sure. Yeah, it's something you're excited about because you can see a lot of the potential there. Of course, you see a lot of potential in so many aspects with BBM, but I think it's something that I, I feel like we can see possibly like in the next year start breaking its way out this way, so to speak. And that's what they say in the article as well. The answer, you know, as to when it will expand beyond Indonesia is that it's a payments payment services aren't simple to replicate from one market to the next, given the complexity of local regulations and banking systems. You know, when you start start messing around with people's money, that's that's when it gets, you know, a little little precarious. You gotta you gotta make sure that everything is correct and, and make sure that everything works the way that it's supposed to and And with just taxes and everything, like if, if you're able to pay for a service or a product through BBM money, then obviously setting up all the taxes and everything properly is a big deal. Like Square, for instance, obviously deals a lot with taxes. But I think they're only in the US and Canada. Um, but I don't know. It you run into a bunch of different law Lot of things like you mentioned, yeah. There's there's a lot of difficulty when it comes to BBM money, uh, in terms of getting multiple users to be able to have access to that money. So, for instance, if someone's paying me through PayPal or an electronic money transfer in Canada, we you can you can email uh, money to somebody. The the reason that works in Canada is that everybody's part of like a select few of, like banks in Canada. And then you log into your bank account. There's some kind of integration between the different banks to transfer the money. And same with PayPal. You kind of need a PayPal account to get that money transferred to you, right? And I think the issue and the reason why it's so pr why they're doing BBM money in Indonesia is because BBM do does have such a strong foothold in that country that a lot of people, if they're transferring money um, to and from stores or, or other people, there's a good likelihood that both ends are going to have access to BBM and have a BBM account. When you look at it in the context of North America, in the U.S. and Canada, for instance, yeah, there's there's a good chunk of people that have BBM, but it's not uh, a guarantee that both people on both sides of the transaction are going to have it. So I think they're just trying to figure out a way how to, to get around that issue. Yeah. yeah. And part of that was the the expansion as well, because in Indonesia they opened it up to all platforms for one. So you have it on Android, you have it on iOS, and you have it on BlackBerry 10, and I think it's on BlackBerry 7 as well, because that's initially where it started. Only makes sense that it's on BBOS there. Um, but they also opened it up so that it's you know you don't you don't necessarily have to bank with any one banking organization in Indonesia now. They opened it up regardless of who the individual is actually banking with. So that was part of the expansion in Indonesia at that point in time. So they, they got over that hurdle. Yeah, I think and like uh, one thing they had to consider as well is, you know, coming to the North American region, where they're using, with, like with, with uh, Canada, I feel like they would be more prone to use it more from a consumer perspective opposed to the states where BBM money would, I feel like BlackBerry would more push that to enterprise customers for whatever, you know, cases that, you know, it could be utilized in. Um, just a simple fact, because as Brandon said, I, you know, I feel like with uh, Canadians, you know, you, you guys have your certain brands that are out there or certain businesses. Uh, and they've been around, so people grow attached to them and they stick to them. You know, BlackBerry is also one of those brands, so if they introduce this service to them, you know, they wouldn't be shy to using this pose to, you know, here stateside you have Apple Pay and all these other new uh, Google Wallet, you know, these new services, electronic services that are coming about, um, people are a, a little less re uh, reluctant to use them. Um, BlackBerry would have to kind of really step in and show how they're much more secure, how much more easy it would be to transfer funds or to pay for um, things with the service. Uh, 
so it's kind of it, it's interesting to see how Blackberry would exactly push it here in this region. Um, but me personally, I would definitely use it myself. I, mean, I, the, I bet I bet the Android version is going to come preloaded on the Android slider. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's just Tom fooling now. But you're right, yeah. Darius. I, I I think there's a lot of complexities to the markets that we want to see it in. But Canada, I mean, you'd think Canada at the very least, right? Like, <laughs> let's maybe Sorry. get them on board. If you can do Mackenzie Health, then you can do BBA Money. Just oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, I mean, just just look at just look at like Snapchat. Like they introduced the sending money and. I guess how much do you do you trust Snapchat as a company? They're still considered like a startup, and um, just sending lots of money through that. Like I don't know if you really trust it. Whereas BlackBerry, they're known for security, and when you're dealing with money, you you want a company that is very secure. So I think it, it could be a good thing. Um, but there are so many services out there. Did you ever right get the uh, the fifty bucks I sent you over Snapchat the other day? Hmm. I do. Oh no, I'm banned from Snapchat because we have black. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's rich. I won't throw any dev names out there. No. <laughs> so we heard some interesting leaked information, and literally that's like the rest of this podcast, except for the uh, the Cobalt Blue BlackBerry Classic. So before we get to the leak stuff, let's talk about that classic. It's been a waiting game, man. I've been wanting to see this thing forever, but it's finally here. I, it, it was crazy to me that the white BlackBerry Leap came out before the Cobalt Blue BlackBerry Classic. Yeah. But, but what do you guys think of the color? Is it something you think is going to sell? It, does it have an appeal at this point? I feel like it's so subtle that it's like, I don't know, are people really going to go out and buy, I don't know. I'm very partial to it. It's just like another color. It's not yeah. like blueberry. It's like red, yeah. It's yeah. the blueberry. Blueberry. That's my fucking cousin. He he's been anticipating it so long. I've I've been trying to persuade him to get a passport. He's like, no, no, the classic is it for me, and the blue variant is exactly what I need. And like, as soon as it was like, I swear to God, I, I don't know if he had an insider with shopblackberry.com, but like he sent me a screenshot, like, boom, bro, I got it. I was like, Jesus, <laughs> we're really excited about this this color, but. Um, I think it's dope. I mean, I really, I actually like the color of the device. You know, it's not like a, it's not nothing that is like a out of this world type of blue. It's really a, a subtle color, um, almost uh, <laughs> like lavender like. <laughs> I was kind of making fun of it, but it it really is. I think it really kind of complements the device. To be honest with you, like some colors don't, um, depending on the design of the device and whatnot. But it really does complement it. I think it's kind of cool. Um, I'm really anxious. Mm-hmm. That bronze uh, variant that is still to come, but I, I like the color. Um, and it kind of 2016, Darius. 2016. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. See, that's that's what when you say that the blue complements the device. That's exactly what comes to my mind is like the bronze version because I really don't think that the bronze actually complements that device. I think it looks terrible, right. but you know. Right. It, it, it looks like a doodoo brown. That's why I'm, <laughs> that's a, I'm like, you know, I wasn't going to put it out there, but, you know, that's what it kind of No, I will like, say I it. That. I, I will say it. But no, I, that's they're why gonna, I they're gonna, They're going to sell a shit ton of them. <laughs> 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 no, I just I really want to see what it looks like, you know, like a actual review of it and, and see what people really think of it. I mean, because it's one thing when we see these renders of the devices in these certain colors or you know whatever, and it's like ah, I don't I don't yeah. like it. But then it comes out and you're like, oh, yeah, actually, it's not that bad. So you know, but the, I love the blue act like navy blue, so I, I'm I'm about it. The, again, uh, what probably is the coolest thing about the device is the price you can get it at right now. It's like seventy five bucks off at least yes, to the state yeah. side. So. Yeah, it's a pretty yeah. good deal. Three seventy five for a classic that's was selling at four fifty. It's not a bad deal, especially for the cool color variant. So kudos to them at least doing the little Independence Day sale, doing the blue color. Kind of makes a little more sense that way. I kind of right? I, I kind of figured that was coming when they did the like the Canada Day one because they mm-hmm. did red and white. Yeah, you knew that the blue one was coming right after because red, white, and blue, right? <laughs> That's Makes interesting that, that we that's interesting how BlackBerry looks at it and the seasonality of it. Maybe we'll see some more of that, maybe with the slider device or some yeah. of the other devices coming later Rogers, in the year. Rogers used to do that well, I mean, I guess you could say collaboratively, Rogers and Blackberry, because during the the Christmas season that was generally when Rogers and Blackberry would put out the red and white devices on Rogers at that point in time, right? 
Christmas colors, you know, here's your white cloud, here's your white 9900 or your white Z10 or whatever at that point, right? Would you guys do a blue passport? <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Here's the thing. People are gonna people are gonna get the bronze classic, right? And then they're gonna get the gold frets, and we're gonna look back at the device and be like, "Wow, that is pretty fire." <laughs> I'm telling you. It's just interesting. Like, what kind of holiday or what kind of occasion can we see them uh, putting out the brown one? You know. <laughs> I'm trying to think of what it would be like. Independence Day, maybe like President Lincoln's birthday. Like, I have no idea. <laughs> I, I, I kind of get more worried the fact that, like, them coming out with a bunch of different color variants because, like, I don't know, what if one doesn't sell very well? They're probably not going to make that many, but if you just have, like, a black and a white, it's like, pick your choice. But then once you have, like, a red and a blue and a, a brown, then it's like you start building up this stock inventory that I, I it gets me a little bit worried for, like, they're not necessarily <laughs> in the right scenario to start having all these colors right now, even if they do say limited edition kind of thing. Maybe they just build X amount and try and sell them out. But Yeah, and the, the, there's always a question when they say limited edition as well because the red is limited edition, but you've been able to get it ever since it was Yeah, released, but right? maybe they so. made way too many than they had thought. Like, yeah. maybe that's, like, no one really knows. I don't know. I think, I think they've probably got their cost proposition down on these devices because, I mean, look at the hardware. Like, honestly, look at the hardware. Yeah, at least on the classic device. So they could, they probably have a lot of that outsourced at this point that it doesn't have a lot of impact on the overall. But yeah. I want to welcome Chad on. How you doing, man? Hey, guys. Sorry um, for jumping on late, but good evening, everyone. Hey, so, hey. If you hopped on at the perfect time, Chad, because we just passed all the kind of boring stuff, and now we're going to get into the major <laughs> thing. But uh, thanks for coming on, man. Always good to see you. So we just closed talking about the the bronze BlackBerry Classic, Chad. Is that something you, you'd be interested in actually picking up or at least seeing? The bronze? Um, not as much as the uh, cobalt blue, to be honest. You like the blue? I like the blue more. So more than the white and the, and the black or kind of somewhere in between? <laughs> um, if I were to rate them, I would do cobalt blue, then the black, then the white, and then the bronze. That's a, that's a pretty fair assessment right there. I, think I, could, I could co-sign on that one, Chad. Yeah. <laughs> well, we had some interesting leaked information come out, and I, we'll do a little transition here in our conversation, because this, this episode is entitled Leaks. And John Chen came in very early at his time on BlackBerry and said, you know, we're really going to be cutting down on the leaks. And honestly, in the last couple months, the six, last like six to eight months, we have not seen too, too much in terms of what's coming, and a lot of what's leaked out, we've seen different like, device renders here and there, but there hasn't been too much. With some of the leaked news, the at and getting the slider, this BlackBerry slider device, and that a render of the device came out with the, the screen showing Android Lollipop. What do you guys think about leaks right now for BlackBerry? Are, are, are what we're seeing now kind of a representation of the Reuters article, and people are just kind of pushing the snowball down the hill further? I'm saying or do you think this is realistic? Chris is getting some flack for at least on the on the forums from what I've seen. They're like, Chris, why aren't you like leaking more stuff from BlackBerry? Like, come on, stop being so safe. <laughs> it's like, well, there's not really stuff to leak anyway. Like, I don't know. Right. They're at a very big point in time where it's like, well, is it going to be Android? Well, if it is, how much is going to be Android? So I think they're really keeping their cards close. Um, maybe in the future, once you find out the decision, like, hey, if it's running full out Android, then well. Software-wise, leaks aren't really going to be as big of a deal because Android is Android. Um, obviously, what products and services they offer. I, I just think right now they're keeping their cards closer to their, you know, um, themselves Close. than normal. Yeah. <laughs> closer, closer to their back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, uh, it, it was interesting because if you follow Blaze's personal BBM channel, he put out just some some rumors and, and their where whereabouts on, online that it, things he'd heard and picked up and Chris do you remember what some of those things were in specific uh, well this is the thing is basically like we've we've been talking about Android on Blackberry for you know as long as anyone here can actually remember like back to the playbook when the playbook was announced that it was getting Android app compatibility that's when all of this sort of flared up 
Okay, so we reached that point. We got the playbook. <coughs> we dealt with the Android on that. Then it came to BlackBerry 10, so on and so forth. And now all of these rumors are, are filtering out about the next generation of devices and so on. And when it comes comes down to the slider, there has been what I think is a, a lot of misunderstanding, for one, as to what BlackBerry is actually doing. Because we've seen the Reuters article, and they said Reuters basically said that yeah, they're going to run an Android uh, device, which may or may not be true. But when you read that article, I'm pretty sure everybody looked at it and was like, eh, maybe not, because maybe Reuters is just misunderstanding what is actually happening here with the Android runtime. So, you know, we, we don't necessarily know what's going on with the slider at this point. And I'm pretty sure that I I don't even think anybody knows except for deep within BlackBerry. So some of the rumors, you know, it's going to be a BlackBerry 10 device. It's going to be an Android device. It's going to be a device that brings, you know, a, a superior Android runtime using the hypervisor solution, which we all know we've, we've discussed that through and through. You know, that hypervisor solution Let's... is a 100% possibility. We just don't know how it can actually be done and put out into the world with Google's approval. Um, yeah, let's let's not forget about the possibility of a Tizen device too. There, yeah. <laughs> uh, ejects from Hangout. I mean, there's there's so many rumors surrounding the device that you could I could literally list off hundreds of them just going by what we've heard. I've heard that they gave it to UK focus groups to go ahead and test in various different ways. I've heard that you know some of the retailers in in the UK have actually got hands on with it and have essentially report it back that it is a 100% Android device with BlackBerry, you know, solutions added to it. I've heard just the opposite of that as well. You know, UK retailers who say that they've gone hands-on with it and it's a BlackBerry 10 device with an improved Android runtime. So there's, I mean, like I said, you could go on and on and on for days about how many rumors there is. The, the fact of the matter comes down that there is zero proof in regards to what it is exactly that BlackBerry is doing. And all of these things that are popping up aren't facts. They're rumors and speculation at this point. And nobody has laid out the 100% truth as to what's happening. And realistically, I don't think we're going to get the 100% truth until BlackBerry is ready to actually have some of that filtered out there. Yeah, but what do you think is, is, is likely to happen, Chris? What I, what I think is likely to happen is that I think that they found a way to run the hypervisor solution. They found a way to integrate BlackBerry 10 and Android in a more superior way than what they have now. So it's going to be almost similar to what we have at this point in time on all of our passports, leaps, whatever you're running these days, but it's going to be better. They're going mm -hmm. to have the Google Play Store. They're going mm -hmm. to have the Android runtime in there. We're going to get a newer version of Android. The only thing is, is that, you know, as I said earlier, we still don't know how they're going to get Google to approve it. How do they... Yeah, that's, that's what I was just going to bring up. Yeah, yeah, that's what a lot of people are saying. That's the hitch. Nobody knows how they can get Google to go ahead and say, yeah, okay, you can do that. Because they've struck down all of these things before. But at the same time, you know, adding to those rumors, mounting rumors that keep popping up and up and up, you know, they obviously did some work with Google. They did some work with Samsung because they did the whole Google... Uh, uh, Android for work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Android for work. They've been working with Samsung, so there's definitely communication happening there as to what level of communication. We don't know, but... Yeah. There's too many pieces that are falling in too straight a line, in my opinion. Right. And it yeah. all leads to the same direction, that yeah. we're getting something better than what we have now. And that is all people should really go, have yeah. to say, you know. It, it's getting better. The development is continuing forward. Our, whether people are worried whether this thing is going to run BlackBerry 10 or Android, I don't think is the point we should be working at right now. Because as John Chen has repositioned the company, they're looking at volume. They're looking at having and selling at least 10 million devices a year to make that business profitable. Who's to say that a chunk of those cannot be Android devices? And still, yeah. with your BB10 and enterprise deployments, you know? I, I think there's so many options. It'd be stupid of them not to explore at this point. 
especially when you're looking at building against the market share that Android is taking up in a lot of those emerging markets that are out there, like Indonesia with BBM money. They need to definitely put the pedal to the metal and get rolling in those markets quickly. And given all the rumors, it would seem as though that they're like exploring a lot. <laughs> and, and that's the thing. When the Z30 came out, it, it was quad core. It was you know four gigs of RAM and all that. I I, re, I, w I would not be surprised at all if the device is a little bit beefy in terms of what it's going to do, how much RAM it has. You know, the specs I think are going to be a little bit modified from what we've seen thus far, and in a good way. So that'll be exciting. Will be they will they have current specs or are they going to still be a year behind though? Oh and, shit! <laughs> I, I think they're still going to be a little bit behind in terms of like the sock, the software on chip, yeah. but everything else is going to be like right there. And you know, LG's doing its G4; it's using that that Qualcomm piece, and, and it works well. I mean. And again, it kind of goes back to the how of it all, right? And that's the one big piece we don't have here. If I were BlackBerry, I would be exploring all of these venues, you know? I'd be going down every foxhole to see what works best. If I were John Shen, I'd be looking at this right now. I'd be looking at how c controlled I have my ramp up. How can I easily create hype? Show multiple people different things and see what happens, you know? And that's what I think is going on. That's why we're getting so many yep. different rumors and, you know, all of the, the speculation that's happening is because they are experimenting. They have done these tests. They've sent these devices out to a certain number of people, and they're gathering feedback. And that's that's why nobody has the 100% the fact nailed down as of yet because they're still in that experimentation phase. If I'd, I had heard there would be a full Android slider with one curved screen, kind of like <laughs> the, the, the Note, and then a BB10 one with the dual curved screen. It, it, literally everything has been said at this point. Yeah. So I've, also, I've also heard that the BlackBerry version, the BB10 version, is going to be produced as a BlackBerry device. However, the Android version is going to be produced as a Samsung device, but it's basically going to be the slider with the Samsung name on it. You know, like, there, there's so much. Just, it's ridiculous the amount of things that have been put out in regards to this one single device at this point. Yeah. You know, and, and I don't want to, like, be uh, an advisor for, for stock in any type of way, but, like, right now, their, their stock's been going down and down and down, and their market cap is at $4.3 billion now. Well, they have... <laughs> They have like 3.2 billion on hand, so right now they're kind of valued at BBM, every type of software they have, all their phones, everything they have. Their 44,000 patents. That's all essentially being valued at a billion dollars right now, which, which is, is just so been, low. Well, that's what it's been valued at previously when they were talking about uh, like companies purchasing them before. So I mean, they have to kind of, you know, convince people that they're worth yeah. more than that, yeah. you know. And like, I, based on I what just, you're saying there, it yeah. seems like they still got some work to do. Yeah, I'm but. still I'm still fantasizing about an Android BlackBerry or a BlackBerry Android, and whether I'd want a slider to be the first foray into that. You have this Foxconn deal. There's hardly any devices really made through Foxconn. Maybe just have them build out an Android fleet of tablets and and whatever with the BlackBerry services. Uh, there's just, as we've discussed, so many different venues for so much of what BlackBerry can do. My ideal outcome for this is similar to Chris, where they've done it, right? A updated runtime, whatever it may be. But imagine if you only access the hypervisor to run the applications within BlackBerry 10. So, like, imagine your Android app, Active Frame, like, that instance is full Android, but when you close it, it just disappears. So it's like not how like. The playbook was. Yeah, kind of more like that, right? Where you can just more seamlessly go back and forth. It's not like balance where you'd like swipe out of one and jump into the other, right? Because that that still feels like a compromise for me at least. Yeah. But but again, they can logistically run two instances of of BlackBerry Ten in that way. And, no, and the the QNX hypervisor solution in the press release <laughs> says we can emulate Windows, we can emulate Linux, and we can emulate Android. Android specifically is mentioned in that release. And so again, what flavor of Android? Something that they're going to put in the car? Where, what's the venue for Q and X? You know. I, I just want like people to understand too that 
if you think that all of a sudden BB time is just going to go away all of a sudden, I don't really think that's going to happen. And then it's also like, think about all the app developers. Me, Brandon, like, I, the app that I built, I put about eight or $900 or hours of my own time into it. If they jump to Android, then there goes, like, a, a big thing that I've done that I'm, like, proud with. Like, it goes in the trash then. Essentially, it ceases to exist in, in a way. So kinda, that would be pretty much saying F you to all the developers and everything, too. I kind of think that's what's going to happen, though, Alex. Like, at this point, I'm kind of, like, I'm just kind of, like, accepting it. I'm, like, yeah. you know, like it's, it's bound to happen. I think uh, I think you guys are, are giving up a little too early. I think there's going to be something for I'm you. I'm hoping. I'm honestly like I I in the same boat as Brandon where I have pretty much given up, but like it makes me feel good at least that you at least that you think differently. And like, like as like as a developer, I'm kind of worried to invest more hours upon yeah. hours now developing new apps for the platform because I'm worried now with all these leaks and, and rumors that they're going to come out with an Android uh, device. And they're not going to be able to use native BB10 apps. Yeah. So I'm worried that if I do that, it's going to be like, you know, w- wasted effort. And so it's funny, even BlackBerry being ports cascades to Android. That's how they do it. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, being on the consumer standpoint of it too, like I just bought that Slack app, and it was five bucks. And it's like, in my mind, I accepted this app is essentially only going to be working on my phone for the next four months because I'm going to be upgrading. And if it's full Android, then you know. And I really shouldn't be thinking that way, but when I'm making decisions, I'm probably not buying as many apps on my phone because I'm making it with the decision, this is really just going to get me up until the next phone, because if the next phone is Android, then... <laughs> they, already, they already took your they've, videos, they already took your music. What do, what do you need your apps for? <laughs> I mean, they've done that with, uh, with, a, with Flash apps, right? With, uh, with Adobe Air apps, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> they, like, people paid money for these applications, and then, boom, 10.3 landed, and then all those apps that people paid for they couldn't use. So I mean, it's not like they're. It's not like they don't have any historical like instances where they've done this before. So, but I in mean, in their defense, they didn't. The apps didn't run that well. Like Adobe Air didn't run that well, and people they weren't amazing. No. Bought, yeah, bought the the Air apps. They were disappointed to find out that they were Air. Neither does like, web design yeah. cheat sheet on the Z10, Alex. At least in the <laughs> about page. <laughs> the about page. Oh my. <laughs> Let's just move on. <laughs> but that's that's the app side as well. But you also have to think of like the security and certifications that BB10 has right now because they have all those security certifications. It's not like it, it. The way I see BB10 right now is exactly like how BBOS is. You you're never going to 100% get rid of it. You know, in any short time frame, like BB10 cannot be done. It's you know it, it it can't be over with just at the at the stroke of some keys and BlackBerry releases an Android phone or anything like that, you know they it it's part of the system now. They have the security certifications for it. They're going to keep all of those things in play. All those devices that are out there are still going to work. All the apps that are there are still going to work. It's just you know maybe if they did release an Android device that you know some of those developers would move over to Android and some would still maintain their BB10 presence. So on and so forth. It's, like I said, it, you can't you can't just get rid of BB10, you know, on a whim. You know, they 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 spent a lot of money getting BB10 to where it is and getting it up there. So you know, worst case scenario, BB10 is still around for quite a long period of time. I mean, BBOS is. You made this point, right? Look at how slow the phase out of BBOS is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You can only imagine what a three year old platform's phase out. It's going to be like seven years, you yeah. know? And the enterprise buys in two to five <laughs> year cycles for their devices. So, really, when you, when you look at some of the devices that have been put out, like the Z10, the Q5, those devices are due for some kind of either redux or at least something that can target that segment because it's been dry for two years. Just like classic is kind of filling that two-year gap from the 9900 on, you know. Yeah. So hopefully they can keep moving forward. I think they need less devices each year. That that seems to be a given where they need to pull back on some of those, focus on software, but give me like one, two, or three really good devices each year. Yeah. yeah. So aside from a slider, what would you guys want to see? Better software in terms of it's <laughs> like all the right, we're I'm getting like, Android. God, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> No, it's just, I mean, even with Android, I mean, let's say they do get Android, right? And let's say you get Android and it's rusty, then it's like, Jesus Christ, you couldn't get that right, and then you go to Android and you can't get that right. 
you at least want them to make sure that it's all you know fair and square. Me personally, I don't really think that you would invest time to make this slider with these high end specs and give a full out Android device. It doesn't make sense to me. Like who enters the market with a new platform as such and you're going all out with like a high end to compete against those other guys like the you know HTC one, <laughs> Samsung S, you know, Galaxy A six and whatever. Like it doesn't make any sense. I really feel like if they enter the Android market it will be a low end device and it should <coughs> you put it in emerging markets. But me personally, I don't really care if it's Android or not. As long as BB, as long as BlackBerry puts its own touch to it and makes it unique in its own very way, I would be happy with it. I just really am tired of people like, oh, I would never use it, and just that and the third, because you would. And, you know, <laughs> oh, I'd use it, but I wouldn't buy it. <clears throat> right, like, whatever, bro. You you would use it. So I think, I think you bring up a good point, though. Um, like you, you mentioned with Android, sure, okay, what, just because BlackBerry owns the patents for the keyboards and things like that, do you really think that they're going to create a fully Android device just so they can get that nice keyboard slide thing out in it? Like, it just doesn't make sense to a high-end device just for a keyboard for people that want it. They're right. going to put a BlackBerry Touch on it somehow. The question is, how much? And that's what we're going to have to find and out. Then, and it is as, as Alex and Brandon mentioned, you know, they look at it like, man, I've invested all this time into creating these, you know, applications for, you know, the BlackBerry 10 ecosystem. And it feels like all my work is just going to the wayside and there's no appreciation there. I mean, it's just a simple fact that BlackBerry's invested too much in the BlackBerry 10, period, to just abandon it. Yes. Yeah. It's definitely not going anywhere. It will always be, even if let's say they just completely say we're going Android. I'm guarantee you there will they will integrate BlackBerry 10 within Android and it will be legit. As as Chris has mentioned, and I completely love his vision of uh, how they can implement the hypervisor and whatnot. I just really feel like that is still a bit ways off, simply because of the fact that it's Google approving it. So I don't think that's something we're going to see this year. I think you will see a BlackBerry 10 slider. <laughs> it will have improved runtime. It will probably have a lot more Google integration, but it will be BlackBerry 10 powered. If they go, I think, yeah. If they go, go and Alex. go ahead, Alex, I'll let you go. No, uh, well, I, I find like you brought up a really interesting point that I generally I don't know why I didn't think about that too. That it's like just because if this next phone is running full Android, what's to say that four years from now when they finally get Android and BB10 working together nicely, they could be doing an internal project or just have this in like certain markets. Then yeah. they could maybe bring it forward. Like I get like people like I didn't think about that. I'm thinking the average person probably isn't either. Maybe they just need two years on Android to get it to where they want it to be and then throw it out there and everyone will be happy. That's yeah. why that's why I don't get the either or that everybody yeah. seems to be running with. Yeah. It's like you it doesn't it's, it doesn't have to be one or the other. They can do right. both if they really want it to. Yeah, I mean like if if, if they do end up going in, in integrating Android a lot a lot more than it already is, they're gonna have to bring their A game. Like for instance, <laughs> if, if I'm gonna have a device that's really integrated into Android, uh, it's gotta be able to work with Pebble. It's gotta be able to work with, you know, Moto like the 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 Android Wear watches and, and, and other things like that. They can't just have like a, a half fast solution, which is what we're kinda like used to pretty much basically when it, it comes it, to the it's Android. It's interesting. So. It's interesting, man, because I look at their latest Android update for BBM and I got I went hands on with it a couple days ago. That, it's nice. Like yeah, yeah. It's, it makes me almost envious, you know. And again, if they were to be able to create just very clean modern experiences like that with the BlackBerry Flare on Android more I might be with Darius, and I'll be like, hey, if it works, it works. <laughs> I mean, I just look at it like, because people act like John Chen didn't say months ago, maybe even a year ago, whenever he took a position as CEO, he said, why am I going to sit here and try to compete against guys that do things great? <coughs> if, Samsung, if Samsung makes great displays, and they do make a great curved display, if I feel like it would look nice on a BlackBerry 10 device, why wouldn't I go to them and be like, hey, let me get a couple of these screens <laughs> because <laughs> I have something up my sleeve to do. Like, And then people just taking it like, oh, my God, they're going to do this with Samsung just because you see the whole uh, Knox partnership. It means completely nothing. You don't know what it means. So stop taking it, blowing it out of proportion, 
and then you create these rumors that X, Y, and Z. Samsung's buying BlackBerry. All right. (laughs) It's just, it it really, it's getting to a point, it's beyond annoying, but it's just completely ridiculous. And it's like people have to get a grip of yourself. You you don't run a company. (laughs) Get a grip. It's just a phone. (laughs) It's just a phone. Fall back for a second and just wait and see. Be surprised. There's that's kind of what my if I have to look at pros and cons of BlackBerry. One of my big the top con is the uh, element of surprise with BlackBerry. There's nothing that I can anticipate to be happy about. You know what I'm saying? Because no hype, so... no hype, and, and that's what I think these leaks right. are. They're not hype. They're misdirection. I yeah. right. That's my personal opinion. But I, I think they're they're throwing this stuff out there. They're putting it in some hands. Words getting around, and people are going to be wanting that slider. And then it's going to be a trick, right? Everyone's going to be, oh, BlackBerry finally put out that Android phone, but it actually runs BB10. <laughs> exactly. And and you know, it's like if if Apple and uh, Samsung consumers and HTC, whomever, if they have these elements surprise of the day of their release, because it's like. Don't get me wrong. You you're pretty much gonna hear and know everything prior to the release. But at least the day of, there's that one or two things they're like, "Oh man, that was cool. I didn't expect them to do that." Let me have that with BlackBerry, please. BlackBerry community, listen to me. I want something good. <laughs> I really want something good. So it's like let things come to existence. Um, we already know like. If if you look at everything and you're looking at the situation with the hypervisor and and everything that BlackBerry is able to do with BB10, the possibilities are endless, like literally. So I know that John John Chen is going to bring something great. I know the BlackBerry team developers are going to bring something great. It's just let's let it happen. You know, you don't know what's going to happen. My biggest thing is I would like today's specs and not yesteryears, you know. Me and me and James had this big thing, and he goes on Twitter and he spreads rumors, and then <laughs> people think I was I, leaking I, yeah, People think I want 15 gigs of RAM and all that. It's not that. I just want whatever the latest and greatest is, because I feel like if this slider is gonna be the flagship device, don't give me what this year's flagship devices had in December. That's all I'm saying. Because essentially, like I'm as I had mentioned to guys before, like in March, four four months later. New flagship devices will be out, and then all of a sudden, that flagship for us is not really, it's not a, I, I don't, a, a true competitor, so to speak. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it's already to the wayside all, all of a sudden. It's, it's a numbers game, though, Darius. I mean, they can't yeah. afford that processor with the amount they're selling. Like, I it's agree. Not, it's not I, a smart proposition. And for I, them. and I certainly, I certainly agree, and I certainly understand that. But it's the simple fact. If you have a platform and you want it to get back into the competitive nature, whether it be consumer or whether it be on the enterprise side, if you want to give the people something, I feel like you should be leading the way. And that's what I want BlackBerry to do. I want them to lead the way, whether it's in specs, whether it's in software, whether it's in enterprise, whether it's in the uh, you know mobile space in terms of the laptop or tablet. I want them to lead the way somewhere and not just security because the security is a given and we already know that other companies already say you can have that BlackBerry. We know we can't do it. Better. Everybody's been like, all right, BlackBerry, all right. All right. <laughs> you know, I want them to really lead the way in what uh, is affecting people first and foremost, and that's what's in the palm of their hand. So, Darius, I've said, I've said this before. I think that BlackBerry cuts the edge, that they don't lead it. Like right now, Apple and Google, they lead that edge. They're taking the market. <laughs> they're, they're pushing it. But BlackBerry seems to again. Who was doing money money mobile before anybody? BlackBerry was right. BlackBerry is ahead of in a lot of things. But again, they they never get to the scale we we want to see no. them at. Apple so. has the money to throw it out to create mm-hmm. the scale, and yeah. they have the people who will because they're just you know there's so many Apple users that are passionate about it. They will like force Apple Pay. Like I'm not going to shop at your store unless you give me Apple Pay. And it's like well that's a ridiculous request, but you know if you get enough people saying that, which people will. Then they'll put Apple Pay in the store. Apple, app, basically, what it breaks down to is Apple can afford to fail. Yeah, like, exactly. It doesn't matter. Like it's it's almost in that Windows Windows Phone eight scenario as well. Microsoft can afford to yeah. like, totally shit the bed on on Windows eight or ten or whatever it is. Yep. Put out there. There is, one it doesn't matter because they have the money in the bank. It's it's done. Yeah. They can they can screw it up if they want to. <laughs> So Chad, I, I like your hat, man. You've been oh. rocking it every day. Any chance I can get to? That's Love dope. It. 
I, I want to hear what, what some of your thoughts are on the BlackBerry slider. Is this something well, you think and or want to run whatever OS that might be? And, you know, honestly, whatever OS they decide to put on it, as long as, as, long as it has the account um, integration with the hub, the organization throughout the calendar, I really don't care. Because to me, that's the only reason why I continue staying with BlackBerry is because of the email integrations, the accounts, and the calendar. I stay organized every day because of that. I had an Android. I had an iPhone. I could not stay organized with that. It was just a mess. And honestly, whatever they decide to put on the uh, slider, as long as it has those items, I really don't care, to be honest. Yeah, I'm in the same boat. I and mean, we talked, we talked about this last afternoon. You know, the hub probably... They probably can't get it 100% how it is on BlackBerry 10. Yeah. They might be able to get close. Yeah. I don't know. There's something about it, man. Just the, the way it, the peak and the gestures all work to keep it all mobile is pretty hard to do. <coughs> so, so, Chad, you think you want it? Like, it, What do you really, really want? Like, If you're buying this device, you're buying it outright, you're spending $700, do you want it to be Android, really, or do you want a BlackBerry 10? Well, I would prefer BlackBerry 10, personally. Um... So there's no hic- love... there's no hiccups in the Android runtime right now. That well, and that's where I was gonna say is have you it, my ideal BlackBerry OS would pretty much be what we currently have, but with full Android capability. Yeah. Um, so just the active is, frames work. Everything's fast. Yeah, everything that OS. would work. Anything with like with my Nexus, as long as I load up an app, it pops right up. With my BlackBerry, yeah, there's some uh, delay, but. Honestly, I don't use the apps that require the Play services, so that doesn't really affect me as much. But honestly, once that full integration comes through, honestly, the the speed, the runtime, everything will just be more efficient. Uh, that would be the most ideal solution. And I think we're, we're building toward it. I want to close out the session here. I really appreciate speaking with all of you. Darius had some killers tonight, man. You really did, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I just tell it how it is. That's... You really do. I'm it's, the it's, bad guy. I like playing the villain to <laughs> all crack and form people. In. It's not really the villain. It's just the reality. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, no, exactly. I'm the I, I I'm the one who faces. <laughs> that's all it is. And and I I accept reality because you gotta understand if you are a BlackBerry loyalist and you can't accept reality, something's wrong. Like look at the, all the ups and downs they've had. So you know, I don't, I don't make my expectations be this high. You know, I keep them very neutral. That's that's all. I'm on Darius's level. Just keep it real. Yeah, just keep Say it real. whatever it is. It's gonna happen. I, mean, I just feel like people build expectations for themselves, and then they get disappointed by their own expectations. Yep. Instead of understanding what BlackBerry's expectations is, and then when they meet them, because they have been over the last year, you're not proud of it. I'm like, are you serious? Like, look at this company. That's that's why people get all hyped up over rumors and stuff like that. And then, you know, like, just as an example, like when the Z30 was coming out, we heard that that had, like, quad-core and crazy specs and everything like that. And what happened, right? It came Uh, out, and it wasn't exactly as the rumors had it. And you know what happened, Chris? Right? You know what happened? They went and bought it. People went and bought the Z30, and they love it. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> and we saw the exact same thing with the passport as well. The passport was supposed right. to be, you know, have way more RAM and a better it processor. Have, it was very competitive in the RAM market. Oh, yeah. And that's oh, the yeah. thing. A lot of people just <laughs> like a floating head. <laughs> Blackberry Blackberry started that device off. I'm absolutely one hundred percent sure. Blackberry started that device off as a very killer spec'd out device. However, they scaled it back gradually to get it to market and get it to the pricing that they wanted. And that is what we ended up with. And, the and they rumors, bought it. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. The man I bought got, I bought three of them. Come on. <laughs> Chris is throwing colors around. <laughs> oh, man. I think we, we've killed the topics, guys. I mean, I'm just looking forward to real information. We've heard about 10.3.3. But what's to come beyond that? Are developers in for an SDK update, a major OS update maybe for BlackBerry devices? We will see as they continue to mount forward here. And congrats to the women over at FIFA. They've been killing it. (laughs) Anyway, guys, you have a great rest of your night. You too. Take care.